Hello, and welcome to Freely Whole Creative. I'm Liberty, your creativity coach from freelywhole.com, where we're making beauty from ashes through creative soul care. Today's project is a traveler's notebook folio journal. If you're new here, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Now join me on the journey and let's create. For this project, all you need is one sheet of 12 by 12 double-sided cardstock. I used a piece from the Lost and Found collection by Tim Holtz to make my journals. You can also use any type of embellishments and decorations that you'd like for it. Again, I use several of the Tim Holtz little ephemera pack type things. I did do some stamping with um, some stamps and archival ink on one of them. And I used these little postage stamp washi tape pieces on the other one. For the journal part, you will need some papers. This can be copy dyed papers, it can be plain copy paper. You'll notice in one of them I used printed music staff paper. So whatever type of paper you want for the journal, you'll need um, some kind of pokey tool or all plus your thread and large needle to sew in your journal. You will need your paper trimmer, your scoreboard, and some kind of adhesive. I used to stress collage medium. If you want to ink your pages, you'll need some ink and a blending tool. If you want to cut thumb notches in your pockets, you'll need either a circle punch to just punch a little notch out, or I like using my envelope punch board to make my notches. If you want rounded corners, then you'll need your corner rounder. If you want to use an eyelet for your closure, like I show, then you will need an eyelet setter of some type. I've got the crocodile Big Bite and an eyelet, and then some baker's twine or other type of twine or stretchy cord, which is, I used both of those on the two different ones I made. And I think that's it. So go gather your supplies and join me on the journey. Let's get started. As I said, we just need one piece of 12 by 12 double-sided cardstock for this. And I've already cut my pieces here um, for the one that we're going to make, but I'll show you the cutting on another one here. And so the first thing we want to do is to cut off three and a half inches. Now we need to decide which way our paper goes and which we wanna cut the three and a half off the top or the bottom. Remember that this is gonna end up being your left side and gonna be partially covered. And this is going to be your right side and partially folded over. So take that into consideration as you do your cuts. If you use a totally non-directional paper, you can turn it whatever way is going to work best for you. So I am gonna cut off the bottom part, I believe, and we are gonna cut this at eight and a half inches. Now this piece is going to be our base piece that forms the folio itself, and then we're gonna cut pockets out of this piece. So I will bring in my smaller trimmer, and each section is going to be four inches, so I want my pockets to be just under four inches wide. 
So they are going to be going sideways unless you just want an even smaller pocket that's only three and a half inches wide. So this is a good reason to use non-directional paper, but I am gonna cut this at just under four inches so that it doesn't get hung up on um, my score lines and folds. Another one, just under four inches. And we're going to cut one of these in approximately half. So we're going to go just a little over one and three quarters inch. So that's going to give us two small pockets. And this last one I'm going to cut diagonally. We may or may not use it. I'll show you how it can be used if you want, but if you don't want it on, that is totally fine. So I'm going to line up the points with the cutter. And that'll give us two triangle pockets. I'm going to do one more thing. I do not like my middle pocket as tall as the three and a half inches wide is. So I'm going to cut mine down. You can sure leave yours at three and a half inches if you prefer. I just prefer mine to be more about three inches. So that's going to give us another little strip there that we may or may not use. So we have a large pocket. We have two narrow pockets, we have two corner pockets, and we have a little strip left. The next thing we're going to do is score our big piece. So you're going to turn this completely around so that the top is on the bottom facing you. So your first score is going to be at four inches and you're going to do one at four and an eighth that's the next notch right next to four then your next one's going to be at eight and a quarter and then eight and a half and then ten and a half so again, we have the top at the bottom facing us. Our score lines are at four, four and one eighth, eight and a quarter, eight and a half, and ten and a half, giving us a little bit of room for some spine and some growth. Since this folio is not going to be just a folio, it's going to actually be a journal with a signature of papers in it, so it's gonna have some depth to it. So that's why we want these extra um, amounts here for the spines. So you can fold those all over. That eighth inch one is gonna be a little bit tricky to get it straight on the cardstock, but it'll work, just work with it. going to give us just a little bit of a spine there to sew our signature into. And we've got just a little bit bigger of a spine on the other side so that we've got some extra room for the bulk in there for folding it over. Now, our last piece, we can do one of two things with. We can either fold it over this way and that would give us a little bit different look going down the front. It would also give us a couple little side tuck places. We're going to put our fastener for our tie here so this isn't going to be a completely open tuck but it would give us room for a tuck or we could glue it all down or 
we can fold it to the inside and do the same thing. Either leave it glued completely down or have a couple little tuck spots on that side. By leaving this on, that gives us a little bit more strength to that flap for when we put our eyelet into it, it'll be stronger and not pull out. So there is the basic folio folds. And now I'm back, I've um, creased my scores all well and I have inked all of my edges on both my main piece and my pockets and we're ready to start putting everything together. So the first thing I wanna do is notch my pockets. You can do this with either a one or one and a half inch circle punch and just cut a little bit out. Or like I told you before, I like using my envelope punch board because I like the shape of the notch that that gives. So on our three rectangle pieces, we know that these are just under four inches. So that means we want our notch to be just under two inches. And so we line that up underneath the punch there, punch that out, and that gives us a little notch. Then we need to re-ink those edges, okay? So we'll do that on all of the rest of them here. Now our triangle pieces, those longer edges are about five and a quarter. So that means we wanna do about two and five eighths for our notch. And this does not have to be precise and exact. Okay, we're ready to glue our pockets on now. So I want my two small rectangle ones to go on my left inside. And so I'm gonna glue them there. And I'm gonna glue right along the edge on all three sides and not the one that has the notch punched out of it. And put that right down in the corner and that's gonna put it just to the side of where our score line is. Same thing on the other small rectangle. And I put this one right about halfway up. You don't want to get it too far up or you won't be able to put very big things in there or they'll stick out the top. But just line that up along the edge. And there's that one. Then this triangle one, I'm going to put inside the middle section. You can put these pockets any way that you want on any sides that you want. This is the, just the way I chose to do this one. And I'm gonna put it just to the left side of the score line so it doesn't hang up that score line. Again, I put the glue along the bottom and along this side, leaving the notched side opened. Okay, now we'll flip it over and do the other side. And I want this pocket to face this direction. It's gonna be just a tidge too long, so after I glue it on, I'll cut that little um, point off, but again, we're just going to glue on the two straight sides. Again, you could use the back side of your paper if you want. You could put the pocket on the other side if you want. 
You could put your two corner pockets on the inside and your other pockets on the outside. Just play around with whatever look you want it to have. Our last pocket then is going to go on the back and it's gonna be our large rectangle pocket. And again, we're just gonna line it up at the bottom and we're gonna center it between the score lines. Now, we've gotta decide what we want to do with this flap. Do we want it to fold in so that everything's the same on the front? Or do we want it to fold out to give us a little bit different look on the front? Since I did a little different look on the other one that I made, I think I'm gonna go ahead and glue this one to the inside. So, gonna glue around the three edges there. I do think I'm gonna leave a little bit of pocket room so I'm just gonna glue down this center area about an inch or so to each side of the middle, and that's gonna leave me two little tuck spots on that side. And because I hadn't folded it that direct, or hadn't inked this side from folding it that direction, I'll get that done now. Alrighty, our folio is ready to put our closure on. Okay, so I'm going to bring in my big crocodile. I have it set for the 3 sixteenths. I have a eyelet and the backing for it here. So I'm going to find approximately my center which at eight and a half is gonna be four and a quarter. And I'll just put a little pencil line there so that I kind of know where the center is. Again, it's not important that it be perfect. We want to go in a little bit from the edge so that our eyelet doesn't um, rip out the side. And punch the hole and then move this forward. Put the eyelet in, put the little backing piece on the bottom there. Okay, let me line this up and give it a chomp. And there we have our eyelet in. Next, we wanna put our closure on. And for this, I'm using a nine inch piece of elastic cord. I've tied a knot in the end of it here. I'm gonna thread the loop part through the back of my eyelet. And you just wanna make sure your knot's big enough that it won't pull all the way through. And then your elastic will go around to hold your folio closed. Okay, the other thing I want to do, let's see, I told you I need to trim that little nip off the corner here. And I like the look of rounded corners here, so I'm gonna round those corners. Again, re-ink those. And all we have left now is to decorate and to sew our signature in. So I will come back and show you what this one looks like completed. 
But in the meantime, I'll show you this one that I finished off. Um, for this, I did a little different closure. Instead of the elastic, I put Baker's twine through it and just put that through the eyelet and wrapped it around and tied it shut. As I said it, I put a different edging on there to give a different look. I did not put a pocket on the front, just a couple embellishments to decorate it. Inside, we've got our two pockets holding some ephemera. We've got our signature to write on or decorate however we want. I put the big pocket on the inside in the middle of this one. I've got this just glued down just to create extra sturdiness there. And I don't have a pocket on the back of this one. So as you can see, it can be done all different kinds of ways. I will come back and show you how I decorated this other one that we just did in the still shots. But now you go make your traveler's notebook journal. And I want to see what you've made. So be sure to join our community. The links are in the description below. And we want to see what you're, you've made with this Traveler's Notebook journal.